really breaks my heart. Cause we've been lied to, misled for years. Calling out to the ghosts, high on this trail of tears. Good afternoon, Chicago. We are from the Gathering of Christ Church. We're located on 8455 South Cottage Grove, next to the cleaners. Once again, we're from the Gathering of Christ Church. We're a church that believes in Christ, that he's the way to the Father and ultimately to the kingdom. We also are a church that understands and know that those who are minorities, African American, Hispanic, Native American, are the children of Israel that the Bible has our ancestry in it, has our lineage, has our history. And we're out here as watchmen to bring forth the word to you today, to give you clarity and understanding on these times ahead. I know that in the news that we've seen all these things going on in China with this virus, this coronavirus, that we have in the Bible that spoke of these prophecies long before we even got here. Teach. And we're out here to give you understanding on how you have to prepare yourselves, not just with goods, not with food, but spiritually for these times. I know a lot of, not of us think that it's hard for us already, but it's gonna get even harder. And if you don't have faith in the Most High, if you don't believe in his commandments, you will fall during these times. You will be like everybody else, clamoring for an answer, not understanding the times that we're in, that we may have a chance to be saved out of it. So we're gonna go into some scriptures to give some more understanding on how we as a people have to start preparing ourselves for when this, this virus or this so-called pandemic affects us, maybe not, being sick, but affects us from getting the food we normally get, the goods we normally purchase every day. Because this is what's happening now. The stock market, the stock market is starting to uh, close down. People are panicking, buying up all that they need, and then what's gonna happen in our community when things dry up? You know what's gonna happen. We see it all the time, looting, rioting. People start stealing from one another. When they don't, once their food runs out, they're gonna look to take from those who are weak and can't defend themselves. That's right. So we are here to bring you forth understanding according to the Bible to protect yourselves, to be a part of a church, to be a part of a righteous community. So you may have a chance once again in these last days. So we're gonna start it off with the book of Matthew. We're gonna start off with Christ and what he prophesied. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse one. And Yeshua went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for the show, show him the buildings of the temple. Verse two, and Yeshua said unto them, see ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left there one stone upon another. And that, and that shall, that shall not be thrown down. Verse three, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? So the disciples asked Christ or Yeshua, the sign of his coming. So Christ or Yeshua, that's his name in Hebrew, is going to give the understanding concerning what the last days or the times will be upon his coming. Keep reading. And of the end of the world, verse four, and Yeshua answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. The Bible says, or Christ says, take, take heed that no man deceive you. That means don't be deceived by what the media puts out there, the mainstream media. We're talking about channel five, channel two, channel seven, channel nine. Well, they're not giving you the scoop what's concerning what's going on in actual streets. They're giving you the, the, uh, the light version. 
they not give you the information like the World Health Organization telling us that all the, the sanitary things are being bought up. They're not bringing out that information. They're not letting you know that airlines, like at O'Hare, are cutting down their amount of flights. United Airlines, a lot of these airlines are cutting down their flights where people can't travel like they want to. They're not bringing out that information concerning what this virus is going on in China. Keep reading. Verse 5, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Verse 6, and ye shall, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars and see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. So Christ or Yeshua said these things must come to pass before his coming. So we're in that time right now that what we're starting to see, we know wars, rumor of wars, we see all these things on the internet, we see all these things on the news, that war is upon us, that war is spoke about all the time. That's right. So we, these are the times Christ has spoken, spoke about over 2,000 years ago. Concerning what's happening right now, what the disciples asked him back then. Keep reading. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Verse, verse 7, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences. And it said there should be famines and pestilences. We see what's going on in Africa right now with all the locust swarming taking all of their livestock. I'm telling you, it is serious out here. You don't think just because it's on the other side of the ocean that it won't affect us. But guess what? We have a global economy. And, what, and, and if it affects one part, it's going to affect another. And Christ spoke about this. But he said the end will not be yet, though. So you still have a chance. You still have a chance to come back to Christ or Yeshua. To leave off of your old ways to where you won't be taken in these days to come. Keep reading. The rest of verse 7, there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Verse 8, all these, all these are the beginning of sorrows. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Don't you see what's happening in China right now? A lot of sorrow happening from this virus. Where they're not giving you the true amount of people that are dying from this. Right. They're keeping these numbers away from you so there's no panic, so you don't prepare yourselves, that you don't know how real it is. But we're out here to warn you as watchmen that you can't treat your lives as a regular anymore. You have to have some understanding and preparedness on the world around you. You got to start thinking ahead, not just on that day. You got to start preparing you and your family for the times to come. Right, so we're going to continue to get some more information concerning some scriptures concerning these end times right now. The book of Isaiah, <clears throat> chapter 24, verse 1. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty. And the Lord maketh the earth empty. Keep reading. And maketh it waste, and turn upside down, and scatter abroad the inhabitants thereof. Verse 2, and it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with his mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller. So this is going to happen to everybody. This is the most high judgment upon the earth. So we're going to find out why is he judging the earth in this way? Why is he bringing famine and pestilence on earth? Keep reading. As with the, the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. Verse 3. The land shall be utterly empty and utterly spoiled. The land will be utterly empty and spoiled. Like we talked about before with all these locusts and all these natural disasters. 
the Most High is making it hard for people to get the things that they need. He's making it hard to get the foods and goods that we always come to know that we will have. But he's doing it for a reason. Keep reading. The rest of verse 3, for the Lord has spoken this word. Verse 4, for the Lord has spoken it. A lot of us think that this version of the Lord, that he's always just kind and love and giving, but the most high is about obedience. And when you're not obedient, just like any father, he's going to bring forth wrath. He's going to bring forth righteous discipline. So this is the Lord. Read that again. Verse 3. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled. For the Lord has spoken this word. For the Lord has spoken it. The Lord is bringing this upon us. We may think it's just by happenstance or by someone else, but this is the Lord's doing. Because he's tired of seeing his creation being disobedient to him. So he's got to do something to show his power, to show that he is almighty, to show that this is his earth and the fullness thereof. All the inhabitants are his. He created us. He's the father of spirits. So he's going to wake us up and shake us up to understand that he is real. Keep reading. Verse 4, the earth mourned and faded away. The world languished and faded away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. Verse 5, the earth also is defied under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws. Because they have what? Because they have transgressed the laws. That's why we're having this suffering right now on the earth. Because the whole earth has transgressed the laws of the Most High. So, your churches are lying to you saying that the law is done away with. Teach. This is the exact reason why we have these plagues, these sicknesses, this shortage of food and supplies and goods. Because we have left the law, statutes, and commandments of the Bible, of the creator of the heaven and earth. That's why we're out here to give you warning, to take heed, to come back to the Bible, to come back to the history of Israel, the Bible of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why we're standing out here today, because we know and understand if you don't keep his commandments, we know that you will suffer the prayers that, are, that he spoke of, that he's going to give this earth. Keep reading. Change the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Verse 5 again. The earth also is defied under the inhabitants under... Uh, read it again. The earth is also defied under the inhabitants thereof. The earth is defiled by the inhabitants thereof. So we defile this earth. And the Most High is going to start to cleanse it. We are defiled it on how we operated in it. We are destroying this earth as we speak. And the Most High sees all from his throne. And he's going to start to punish those who are living wickedly and defiling this earth. Keep reading. Because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Verse 6, therefore hath the curse defiled the earth. Therefore the curse has defiled the earth. The Most High has cursed this earth because we have not kept his laws, statutes, and commandments. Read verse 5 again. Verse 6. Verse 5, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Because they have transgressed the laws. The inhabitants of this earth have transgressed the laws of the Bible. That's why the Bible, that's why this earth is defiled. Because we have transgressed the laws of the Father in heaven. Keep reading. Changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. So we've changed the ordinances. We changed his laws. We changed them to fit us. We change the laws like the prosperity doctrine. 
we've changed the understanding on how the Most High bless us. That's all we think of is the Father blessing us. Guess what? That is wrong. That is not correct. Those ordinances, his laws were changed by wicked men. And they're being taught the same every Sunday, every Wednesday, every time we frequent a church, every Sunday school book. They've changed the ordinances. And guess what happened? The Most High has cursed this earth. Keep reading. Verse 6. Therefore have the, have the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. And the curse have defiled the earth, and those that dwell in it. So we're all a part of this. So that's why we're out here, because you can be saved from it if you come and follow the Most High and keep His commandments. If you serve the Father in spirit and in truth, even though you're amongst the inhabitants of the earth, the Most High's word said he will save you while, while you're in it. Keep reading. The rest of verse 6. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. The earth is burned. Guess what they're doing over in Asia right now from this virus? They're not bringing out these numbers. But they are dying out there. The bodies are being burned. Because they're not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. That's just China right now. Guess what's going to happen over here? Who China took their cues from? Babylon. Don't you know and understand we suffered enough? That's what, once again, that's what we are here to warn you, brothers and sisters. That the ways that you live in right now will be your own demise. The religions you in right now is going to be your own demise. Because guess what? None of these false gods that we worship in these other nations, in Islam, in Buddhism, even in European Christianity, it's not going to have an answer when you come asking questions on why I'm being vexed, why I'm suffering out here, why is this happening? They ain't not going to have an answer for you. Because those gods, those religions were made by Satan to destroy you from the beginning. They're not going to have an answer to save you out of this. But we do which is the Bible. It's got an answer, and it's simple, to turn back to the Most High. So we're going to continue on to give you more scriptures and understanding on these times right now. Because we think that everything is good. I get up in the morning. I go to work. I go to the store. But guess what happens when that store closed down or them shelves start to empty? What are we going to do after that? What are we going to do once they start issuing martial law, they start in issuing curfews? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? How you doing, sister? How you doing? You had a question? Yes, yes, sister. All right, all right, all right. We know we're on 8455 South Cottage Grove. 80, yeah, we're right next to the cleaners. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so we, we have service today um, uh, from 2 to 6 okay. on Saturdays. And then we have Bible study from uh, 7 to 9 on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, God bless you too, sister. Bless you, bless you. Hope so, hope so, hope so. All right, what you got up? Uh, this is Second Estrus. 15 and verse 1 Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Most High. Verse 2 Verse 1 Behold, speak thou in the, in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I So the Most High says, speak thou to the ears of my people 
the word of prophecy. Prophecy are those things that are going to happen, that are spoken of in the past, that predicts what's going to happen in the future. Right, so the Most High says, hear ye, O my people, to prophecy. Keep reading. Which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Most High, verse 2. So he put the prophecy in our mouth, which is the Bible. So that's what we're speaking out now. Prophecy concerning to prepare yourselves for the time to come. Keep reading. Verse 2. And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Right. These prophecies are faithful and true. That's why we read them from the Bible, because it was commanded to be written down so we can be able to prophesy them right now in these last days to help our people know and understand to prepare themselves for the time to come. Keep reading. Verse 3, fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Verse 4, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. All the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. That's right. So those that don't believe this word is true, those who are not faithful don't understand will die. You don't think so, but it will happen. Those who don't believe in this Bible, who don't believe in the God of this Bible will die because they're gonna try to do it their own way. And that's what the enemy wants, you to do it your own way. They don't want you to be together and think on one accord. They want you to be divided and thinking only for yourselves. They plan this to see what's gonna happen, Chicago. They're planning because they know they're dividing you already. And they're going to see who are going to come together and who are going to divide themselves and only look out for themselves. Keep reading. Verse 5, Behold, saith the Most High, I will bring plagues upon the world. The Most High said he will bring, bring plagues on the world. Just because it's happening in China don't mean it's not going to happen here. Like I said in the first verse, what the Most High said, these are prophecies that he brought plagues upon, upon the world. So it's coming here soon as well. Keep reading. Verse 5, Behold, saith the Most High, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. He's going to bring the sword, that's the gun, famine, and destruction because we what we just read earlier in isaiah the inhabitants of this earth meaning us have defiled it so now the most high is tired of watching us destroy his creation and he's going to uh, send the gun in our communities plagues famine right. shortage of food shortage of goods you may have the money to buy, but there won't be anything to buy. A shortage of things, to, uh, a medicine, herbs for your family, for your children. That's why we out here once again, because these plagues are gonna to happen to the world. Just don't think that you are here in Chicago, you're in the safe place. That's why we tell you you need to prepare and turn back to the Most High. Prepare yourselves and your families to store physically and spiritually. Right. Keep reading. Verse 6. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Because wickedness has exceedingly. Read that again. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth. That's why he's going to judge the whole earth. Not just part of it. He's going to judge the whole earth because the whole earth has been wicked and not following after him. Keep reading. The rest of verse six, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. And their hurtful works, like I said, like today, no one even knows that this actually is a Sabbath day. 
that our hopeful works by doing what we want to do on this day, not understanding that it's holy, not being taught that it's a holy day, that those who have the word, or so-called, our hurtful works are what making this earth defiled. Our hurtful works are what making this earth wicked, that the Most High has to judge it. Keep reading. Verse 7, Therefore saith the Most High, I will hold my tongue no more. He will hold his tongue no more. He will no longer be silent. Teach. Read that again. Verse 7, Therefore saith the Most High, Therefore saith the Most High, This is the Most High, the God of the Bible, the God of heaven and earth speaking, no one else. Keep reading. Verse 8, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness. He will hold his tongue no more in touching his, wicked, his, his, his wickedness. Now he's going to address it. He sat and looked long enough. Now he's addressing it. He's addressing it in China first. But guess what? He's going over the whole earth. Keep reading. The rest of verse 8. Which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly ex exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Verse 9. So the righteous complain continually because they have to live in it. Once again, like I said, this is no joke. The Most High is serious. We can think that everything, oh, they just out here talking. Ain't nothing gonna happen to me. I'm good, I'm straight. I got my job. I got money in my pocket. I got what I need. I got, I got guns, I'm strapped, I'm good, I'm straight. That's right. But guess what? If you don't got the most high, all those things are for naught. That's right. It's over. Start to understand that, hey, the most high is real, and this judgment is real. Don't be fooled by what these news outlets, these media outlets are telling you. Don't be fooled by these self-help books that we're reading. Don't be fooled by these religions that we're following because they're not giving you the truth straight out of the Bible. They're not keeping it 100 with you. But the Bible, the God of Israel is. All right, so we're gonna continue on giving you some more understanding. Keep reading up. The second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 24. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, said the Lord. Woe to them that sin and keep my commandments. Woe is destruction. And hey, give me on uh, First John uh, three and five, because we don't know what sin is, but we're going to give you the definition of sin. Read that again. I read verse forty-six again. The second book of Esther, chapter fifteen, verse twenty-four. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, said the Lord. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. So once again, this is God talking. This is God, Ahia, I am that I am. He has brought forth these words to his prophets to tell our people. Woe to them that sin and keep not his commandments. We're gonna give you the definition on sin. First John three and four. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. So whosoever committed sin transgresseth the law. Keep reading. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the transgression of the God, of God's law. So those ten commandments that we see every now and then, if you transgress those, that makes you a sinner. So we're going to read once again from Second Address. Now that we got the understanding that you're a sinner if you don't keep the laws and statutes of the Bible. You can't be out here saying I'm a good person. My heart is good if you're not following the commandments of God. You're lying to yourself. Actually, give me that. Give me that. Because we are thinking that we're um, that we're servants of the Most High. 
and don't understand that keeping his commandments, we're far from him. So once again, we want to bring some more understanding on what it is that it is to be a sinner. So like I said, once again, we just got the definition concerning <clears throat> concerning that if you sin, if you're a sinner, that means that you're not keeping the commandments of the Most High. That's the definition. But we also bring forth understanding that a lot of us think that we're good people as long as we don't bother anybody. If we keep to ourselves, which is fine, but it's even more to that. All right, bring it out, Ock. The book of first, the book of first John, chapter two, verse four. He had he that said, "I know him," and keeping not his commandments is a liar. So anyone that said that they know the Most High, but don't keep his commandments, is a liar. What else? And the truth is not in him. And the truth is not in him. So not only if you're a liar, the truth is not in you as well. Right. So that's the first thing you have to understand what a sinner is. And go back to um, 2nd Edges 15. That what he says, woe unto the sinners. Now we got the understanding of what a sinner is. It's someone that don't keep the commandments of the Most High. And also someone who's fooled and thinking that they are and are not. Read verse 40, uh, 40, uh, 24 again. The second book of Edges, chapter 15, verse 24. Woe to them that sin, and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. Verse 25. I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children, from the power, defile not my sanctuary. So the Most High said he will not even deal with them. He's not going to bother with the sinner. Because he's not gonna, he or she's not gonna listen anyway. Read that again. Verse 25, I will not spare them. He will not spare the sinner. That's the one who doesn't keep the most highest commandments. He will not spare you in these times. That's With these right. sicknesses coming around, he will not spare you. That's right. When this suffering is coming around, he will not save you out of it. But he's going to allow it to happen to you. And then people are going to ask, why is God not doing anything? That's right. Teach. He's not doing anything for you because you're not keeping his commandments. Right. He's going to allow you to suffer because you're not honoring him by holding his commandments. Which are in the book of Exodus chapter 20. Deuteronomy chapter 5. You're not taking heed to the Bible. That's why he's not going to spare the sinner. Keep reading. Verse 25. I will not spare them. Go your way. He, he said, go your way. He said, go on. Teach. I'm tired of you. He said, go your way. Get out of here. Move. Move away from me. That's what he's saying right now to those that don't keep his commandments, those that don't follow him, those who want to follow their own way. Okay, well, if you want to follow your own way, go ahead. But the destruction is still going to happen. And you're going to get caught up in it. But don't cry to me, because I'm not going to listen. Keep reading. Ye children, from the power, defile not my sanctuary. Verse 26, for the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him. So the Lord Most High knows all who sin against him. The Most High knows everyone that sins against me. Like I said, the Most High eyes are everywhere. He sees everything. He knows the sinners. So even if you try to fake it, he even knows the sinner. You may tell man one thing, but the Most High knows. So once again, it behooves you to come back to this Bible, to your history. Keep reading. Verse 26 again. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him, and therefore delivered he them unto death and destruction. Verse so he gonna deliver the sinner, those that don't keep the commandments of the Bible, to death and to dis and destruction. See, a lot of us that haven't heard of this part of the Most High, we just hear the soft parts. We just hear that, oh, he'll deliver us. He'll give us what we need. 
He'll help us when we down. But we don't get the power of God, it will destroy you. He will cut you asunder for being disobedient. See, this is uh, uh, what true servants do. They give you the good and the bad. They just now will give you one part, and even that part is wicked. But we're out here bringing the truth that make that can may save you out of it. Because like I said, the most high word is prophecy. Everything he says will not fail. His word, his will will be done. And we have to know as his people, yes, the people here in Chicago on Saturday night walking back and forth are the most high's chosen people. You are the children of Israel. That's right. And he's looking to save you out of this destruction because you are the apple of his eye. Right. But if you are acting wicked and defiled and spoiled, he's going to discard that apple. And only hold it to those who are holding on to him. All right, so we're going to jump down. Jump down to verse 47. Verse 27. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. And now the plagues have come upon the whole earth. Because once again, we have not followed the Most High. We have been taught to do our own thing whenever we want. Keep reading. And ye shall remain in them. For the Most High shall not deliver you because ye have sinned against him. Read that again. Read that verse again. Verse 27. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. Now the plagues have come upon the whole earth. Keep reading. And ye shall remain in them. And you shall remain in them. The Most High brought, brought these plagues on the earth, and we will remain in them. Why? For God shall, shall not deliver you, because ye have sinned against him. Because we have sinned against him. We have not kept his commandments. That's why he's going to keep us in these plagues. That's why he's going to keep us in his suffering. That's why things don't get better. We ask ourselves, man, why are we out here suffering? Why are we out here? Why I can't catch a break? Jeez. Because we're not keeping his commandments. He's going to keep us in it until we figure out, hey, the Bible is our only way out. So we need to understand, if you don't have this Bible, you don't have this word, you don't have nothing but suffering. All right, keep reading. Verse 46, and now Asia, that are partaker of the hope of Babylon. Now Asia. That's right, teach. Asia. Isn't that where China at? Asia. Hey, read that again. Verse 46, and now Asia, that are partakers of the hope of Babylon. Now Asia, who is the hope and partakers of Babylon, a.k.a. America. The Most High is judging Asia right now. Because they have taken, they have taken their cues from America. Everybody want to be like America, which is the daughter of Babylon. And guess what? Asia is suffering for it right now. And read that again, because people don't believe that these prophecies are true. Read that again from the top. Verse 46. And thou, Asia. And thou, Asia. Keep reading. That are partaker of the hope of Babylon. That means they're the hope partaker. That means they follow the customs of America. This is a judge the judgment on, ba on Asia for following after America. The same economy. Buying and copying all this, the goods, all the services. China is just another America that formed. Keep reading. And art the glory of her person. Verse 47. And she, in Asia, China enjoys modeling themselves after America. But this is the judgment. Read it from the top again. Verse 46. And thou, Asia, that art partaker of the hope of Babylon, and art the glory of her person. Verse 47, woe be unto thee, 
thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her. Woe unto you, China, Asia, for making yourself unto like America. That's why I said, hey, these plagues are going to happen over the whole earth. You just seeing it on a big format in China right now because they've taken their understanding. They've taken the place of America because they wanted to be like it. That's why the Most High are sending plagues over there right now. It's because they wanted to be so much like Babylon, which is America. Keep reading. And has decked thy daughters in whoredom that they might please and glory in thy lovers which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. China has always wanted to do business with America. And they're showcasing that by following after them. And by doing so, guess what? They're being judged right now. So take a look. If you look at China, who, who has patterned themselves after America, and they're getting this play, guess what's gonna happen here next? It's coming here if we, it's coming here regardless. But are we going to be prepared for when it comes? Are we going to have God in our lives by the time it comes? Are we, going to, are we going to have Christ when it comes? Because just like what happened in China, guess what? It's going to happen here too. The Bible has prophesied it. Keep reading. Verse 48. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. The Most High hates America and her inventions. That's why the Most High is plaguing Asia, China right now. Because they have taken on the things which the Most High have hated. Keep reading. Saith the Most High, saith the Lord. This is not coming from us. This is coming from the God of the Bible. Yes, right. Keep reading. Verse 49. I will send plagues upon thee. He will send plagues where? I will send plagues upon thee. He will send plagues to Asia for following after America. Now this is prophecy. Woe unto Asia who have taken themselves after Babylon that he will send plagues to Asia. Keep reading. Verse 49, I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, poverty, widowhood. Don't you think a lot of men are dying out there in China right now from this virus? Widowhood. There's a lot of women out here that have husbands anymore that are dying from these sicknesses. Once again, for, for patterning themselves after this country. Guess what is going to happen here next? Are you going to be prepared? Read that again. Verse 49, I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, poverty, famine. Widowhood, poverty, famine. This is from, the, uh, this is from God of the Bible. This is what is not being taught, taught to us. That if you have a father, guess what comes with it? Good and bad, discipline. We know our earthly fathers, he appeared us after his own image. So as a father will operate with his child, the most high is gonna operate with his children, the inhabitants of this earth. This is a swift discipline from the most high. We can't just look at what man does or the CDC who created this crap. The Most High have put it in their hearts to do this because this is his discipline for earth that had turned his back on him. Read that again. Verse 49, I will send plagues upon thee. Plagues. Widowhood. Widowhood. Poverty. Poverty, that means that you're not gonna have anything because it's all going to be taken up, bought up from panic. It's going to be destroyed. Keep reading. Famine. Famine. You're not going to be able to feed your families. That's right. There's going to be a drought in the land. 
for lack of resources. Keep reading. Sword. Sword. People are going to be fighting and killing each other with weapons, guns. These things are going to happen. Guess what happens when food runs out? Oh, I've got to start taking it then. If they're not going to give it up, hey, I've got to have my gun on me to take it. All these things are going to happen, are happening right now over in Asia, or so-called China right now. Keep reading. And pestilence. And pestilence. Sicknesses. Diseases. Pestilences are, pestilences are just a nuisance. Something you get tired of. These diseases, sicknesses. This is what the Most High have plagued China with for following after Babylon, the customs of it. To waste our houses with destruction and death. To waste our houses with destruction and death. All these things are coming from the Bible, from the God of the Bible. It's coming from nowhere else. This is prophecy. That's, when, that's why no one will want her mate. It's because the, these words are true and forever. The Most High Word is born, is bond. And we gotta understand this, brothers and sisters out here. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta understand that each day is, is, is serious. Like I said, it is serious. We just can't go on about our day like nothing's happening or that's just on the news. I'm telling you, it's coming here. It's coming to your block. You're gonna go to Walmart and find out it's closed. You're gonna go to your local store your Billy's guy rolls, and they won't be open. That's right. You'll go to your McDonald's, your Burger Kings, the crap that they put in our neighborhood, your Subways. That's right. They're gonna be closed. That's right. You'll go to your local grocery store, your Pete's, fresh produce off of 87, Stony Island. It's gonna be closed. It's gonna be ravished in that mad panic to get all you need. Walgreens is gonna be closed. It's gonna be heavily guarded right. from looters by the police. Curfew is gonna come. All these things are gonna happen if we don't start preparing ourselves with the most high. Start looking after one another because that's the only way you're gonna be saved out of it. If you don't do, do it together, you will fall in these plagues. Verse 50, and the glory of thy power shall be dried up as a flower. And the glory of thy power shall be dried up, meaning it will be consumed. Keep reading. When the heat shall arise that is set over thee. Right, so just like how heat dries up, your, your, all the things that you have will dry up. Your storehouses will dry up. The food that's in your refrigerator will dry up. Your goods that are in your house will dry up. Right. Just like how the sun will dry up that flower, so will all your resources. And it's not gonna just happen to the poor, it's gonna happen to those who think they got something. Those who think they got it made. Those who think they got it made. Those who you think they got it, your celebrities. Those who think who, who have high stature. They're gonna suffer it too because the most high said it's gonna happen to the whole earth. No one to be resolved from it uh, except if you follow the most high. That's the only way you'll be absolved from this, these curses, these plagues. If you follow after the father and come amongst his fold, like-minded people who are looking to care for one another, look to look out for one another. That's the only way you're gonna be saved out of it because if you do it alone, you will be destroyed. So we're gonna give you some more understanding concerning if you, have, if you follow the Most High, how will it be to your benefit? This is 2nd Esdras chapter 16, verse 74. Hear, O ye, my beloved. It says, hear, O ye, my beloved. Brothers and sisters out here, you are beloved by the Most High. That's right. Read that again. Verse 74. 
Hear, O ye, my beloved. Hear, hear me, my beloved, my children, the children of Israel. We're not talking about the whole earth. We're talking about the children of Israel, right. the children of Yahshua Allah. That's right, teach. He's talking about you, his people, the one he's chosen above all nations. He's he's talking to you right now. Keep reading. Say it the most high. Say it the most high. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand. The days of trouble are at hand. We see it right now. The days of trouble are at hand. Like I said, these plagues are real. The stock market crashing is real. All the things that they're talking about on the internet that is happening to our people is real. Keep reading. The rest of verse 74. But I will deliver you from the same. But the Most High will deliver you from the same. He can deliver you from the things that we brought out so far. He will deliver you from the same. Because trouble is coming. But the Most High, the God of the Bible, Ahaya of Shah Ahaya, will deliver you from the same, these same troubles. He can deliver you out of them. Keep reading. Verse 75. But ye not, be ye not afraid. Be ye not afraid. We're not afraid out here. Right. We don't understand if we follow him, he will take care of us. That's right. We may not know how, but we have faith in his word like we read earlier. The unfaithful will perish. But we have faith in what these scriptures say. To know that if we follow after him, that we will be delivered from these troubles that are happening right now. Keep reading. Verse 75. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt. For neither doubt. Don't doubt in the word of the Most High. Don't go after your own wisdom. Keep reading. For the Most High is your guide. For the Most High is our guide. He's our God and our guide. He will get us through this. But we have to do one thing. Keep reading. Verse 76. And the guide of them who keep my commandments. But we have to keep his commandments. That's the only way he's going to guide us through this. Is by following the, um, the Bible. The commandments in the Bible. His words, what he's commanded us to do here on this earth. Israel. The only way he would deliver us out of this trouble, out of these plagues, these viruses, these sicknesses, is that we have to keep his commandments. Keep reading. Verse 76 again. And the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Most High, let not your sins weigh you down. Exactly. So if we keep his commandments, he will deliver us from out of this. So this is what we have to come back to, people. It's following after the Most High. Not after our own ways. Because as I'm looking out right now, that has not worked. Right. We doing it ourselves has not worked in our favor. I can see that every time I come out of my house. I come to our neighborhoods. I drive down the street. That our way is not working out for us at all. That's right, teach. So we're gonna give you some more understanding on what you can do to save yourself from out of these perils the, of, of this time. Right. The book of Psalms, chapter 91, verse one. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So who, the, whoever the, um, stays in the secret places of the Most High, will be protected. What is his secret? What is his sanctuary? His word. His word covers us. We always hear about the blood of Jesus. This is the true covering of that blood. It's his commandments. The Most High is only to protect those who listen to him. If you don't listen to him, he's going to discard you as we just read earlier. He has no place for sinners or those who don't keep his commandments. So you will not be under his protection if you don't follow after him. Keep reading. Verse two, 
I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Those who believe will know that the Most High are their refuge and His fortress. Keep reading. My power in Him will I trust. In Him will I trust. So we have to trust in the Father. That's how we're going to be saved out of this. We have to know that He is our refuge. We don't have to see Him to know that He exists. Right. We don't have to touch him. We have to believe in what he says and what he's going to do. That's what he requires of us. Israel, keep reading. Verse 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. He will deliver us from the snares of the fowler. Those who are looking to hurt us. Keep reading. And from the noisome pestilence. And from the noisome pestilence. If we trust in him, he will deliver us from such things. Keep reading. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers. He will cover us. He will cover us from these plagues if we trust in him. And make him our refuge. Keep reading. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. He will cover us and under our under his wing we shall trust. See, that's the thing. We have to see something to trust in it. And that's part of our, our, our problem out here. Is that everything we don't understand, we're, we're protected by something higher than what we see. We don't understand that we're protected each and every day when we get up when we leave our houses, when we make it back to our homes and be able to get into our bed, we don't know that the Most High has protected us. And we don't understand that part or that aspect of our lives. Right. We think that ourselves, we think we protect ourselves. We can't do nothing for ourselves outside of what the Most High has done, His mercy has done for us. We think that we do everything on our own. We have pride in our hands and what we see with our eyes and think the things that we do protect us. But it's been the most high all along. Keep reading. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth, which is his word, will be our shield and our buckler, will be our protected, will protect us. Keep reading. Verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. We won't be afraid because the Most High Word protects us because we believe in it. That's why we're out here telling you all to come back to it because that's the only thing that's going to keep you from the terrors of the night. Keep reading. Nor for the arrow that flies by day. Verse 6. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor the pestilence that walk in darkness. See, over there in China, they don't believe in the Most High or trust in them. That's why they're being destroyed right now. That's right. That's why they don't have a covering. That's why they're not protected. They want to follow um, Buddhism and all that other nonsense. So guess what's happening? Right. Buddha is not protecting them right now. None of the gods they're following are protecting them right now for what's happening. But Israel, you have a chance. Black men, you have a chance. Black women, you have a chance. So-called African Americans, you have a chance if you take heed to the word of your God. The word, the God of your forefathers, which are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's right. The God of Israel. Your nationality. You can be saved out of it. If you take heed, keep reading. Verse 6. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Verse 7. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. See, that's what happened over in China right now. Thousands. See, they're not going to give you these numbers, but the Bible will. Thousands and ten thousands are falling from these plagues. That's right. You looking at people, they only, they're not going to show you the footage of people being burnt, incinerated, being picked up off the streets because of this sickness. They're not going to show you. They're just going to think it's just a small little virus. They're going to, you know, uh, uh, Trump is on the news. 
Tell me they got a vaccine for you. Yeah, they want to put, put that plague into you. This is how they implement things. They create a panic. They're going to send it to your local Walgreens like they do the flu shot. Hey, you don't want this coronavirus. Come stop by. It's free. And then now you're suffering from the same ills that they're having over in China. But if you come back to the most high, if you keep his ways, he will protect you from that. Keep reading. Verse 7. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. It will not come near to you or to us, those who follow the commandments. All who don't will die. Those are the ones that are fallen slain because they don't believe or follow the God of the Bible. But those who do, even if they're over there in it, are not going to be plagued by it. If they follow the Most High. Keep reading. Verse 8. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Exactly. The wicked are the ones that are dying from this. But those who follow the Most High, their eyes will see their destruction. They will be witness to it like we're witnessing it right now. We're witnessing these plagues and these diseases that are happening to a earth that have turned their back on t of the, against the Most High. Those who have faith and trust in the Most High's word will see the destruction of the wicked of those who don't believe. Keep reading. Verse 9. Because thou hast made the Lord with my refuge, even the, the Most High, thine habitation. Verse 10, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Right. So if you follow the Most High, these plagues that will happen, even here, will not touch you. If you follow and believe and trust in the Most High, right. these plagues won't touch your family. If you're following after the Most High, but if you're not, guess what's going to happen? You're going to suffer just like everybody else. You're going to witness. You're going to be part of what those who are righteous are going to witness. The plagues that have been given, have been done, have been brought to us by the Most High. Once again, He is the one who are bringing these plagues. You just seeing man bring them forth. He's using man to do his will. He's using man to create these plagues. He's using the CDC to create this garbage. And the people are suffering from it right now. Keep reading. Verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. The Most High will give his angels charge over his, his people. Those who believe those who follow after his law, statutes, and commandments. He will send angels to protect us. Keep reading. To keep thee in all thy ways. To keep us in all thy ways. Keep reading. Verse 12. They shall build thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. So the same angels that were prophesied in Matthew 4 that were going to protect Christ those same angels he's going to send to those that believe in him. But first you got to believe in the Father and turn from your wicked ways and start serving the, the Father, the God of the Bible. That you don't partake in these plagues. Keep reading. Verse 13. That's our tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on the feet. Right. The lion, the adder, those things that are dangerous, we'll trample on them because we're serving the Father. We're not going to be affected by them because we're serving the Father, the Bible. We're keeping His commandments. Only those who don't keep them, only those who are uh, worshiping false religions, they're going to suffer from these plagues because they're not being obedient to the God of the Bible. They're not, they're not taking it serious. They're looking for other ways to come from out of their own peril. Keep reading. Verse 14. Because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he had known my name. Exactly. So those, the Most High will set his love 
upon those that have known that have known his name, that have followed him, that have trust in him. He's gonna save those. The Most High is not gonna save everybody else, only those who look to serve him. That's only, the, that's only, he's only gonna save those who trust in his word and are obedient to his word, which is the Bible. Everybody else he's gonna discard. He's gonna tell them to move away from him. Once again, this Bible is serious, it's no joke. These commandments and what the Father said was going to happen is going to and is happening. You can go along with your day and think that everything is cool, right. but what happens when it comes to your doorstep? Jeez. Then you're going to say, That's right. Father, help me. Jesus, save me. Why God not doing nothing? Then it'll be too late. Because you heard it here first. You will hear it. You will have ample time to prepare your heart to write for the Most High. So there will be no excuse for when it happens to say, hey, the Lord didn't look out for me. That is a lie. Keep reading. Verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. He will deliver us in trouble. But those will only be for the ones who come back to the Father, who come back to the Most High, who keep His commandments according to the Bible, not according to Sunday worship. But He's going to save those, those who go to, and see the thing is, those who think they go to church on Sundays, you got to realize if you're not keeping the commandments according to the Bible, you're going to be partakers in these plagues too. You're going to wonder why Jesus is not doing something for you. Because Christ said, believe on me as the scripture has said. And you're not learning the scriptures when you go to church on Sunday. Believe me, those, your pastors, those who not teach teaching correctly, those in those congregations are going to suffer the plagues as well. Right. They're going to be asking for laying on the hands. They're going to be asking for that anointing oil. They're going to be asking for a prayer. But the Most High will not hear it. The most high's ears are going to be shut close to them because he's not going to listen to the sinner. He's not going to listen to those that don't keep his commandments. So if you claim that you know the most high and that you love God, you got to start looking at his Bible and start looking to, for your own salvation. Stop listening to others. Stop listening to your pastor, but start Start looking into this Bible for yourself, for this truth. Keep reading. Verse 16, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. With long life will I show those who keep his commandments and salvation, which means deliverance. He's gonna give those who believe in him long life and deliver them from the time for trouble. So once again, we're from the Gathering of Christ Church. We're located on 8455 South Cottage Grove. If you believe in the Most High and you want to follow him and you want to know these times ahead, stop by, we have service. It started at two o'clock. We have service on Fridays from seven to nine. We have service on Wednesdays from seven to nine. So if you're looking to get your heart right to serve the Most High, you can view us online as well, YouTube, Agather144, or on, online as well, gatheringchristchurch.org. Bless you all. Shalom. Shalom. Really breaks my heart. Because we've been lied to, misled for years. Out to the most high on his trail of tears. Uh, higher, higher, higher.